is an excellent display here from Rossi. Very good job. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I will see this oh. one in a while. I think I love the bit. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Tahud coming in. Team Wars Talks number three. Today I have some special guests with me. Negative One, Sauce God, Herf, and Mini B. All of them are actually with me right now. Get back to it. We are Damn. live Damn. with Team Wars Talk number three. We got Negative One, Sauce God, aka James, Herf, and Mini B in the call right now. Introduce yourself, guys. What's going on, guys? Uh, yeah, James, Sauce God, whatever you want to call me. Back in it for another one. Hey, big one. I'm here again. <laughs> they didn't hate me enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Herf. Uh, play for Toon Squad. Hello, everyone. Mini B is here. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. All right, well, uh, we can go and get right into it. We're not going to have the longest show today. I know we um, put on a snooze fest last time. As we stalled near the end of last week's Team Wars talk. So we're going to condense all the information and keep it really nice and enjoyable for you guys still, uh, despite that. First match report on the screen, which was the first match of the week. Actually, it was the second match of the week. Uh, but regardless, maybe it was the first match of the week. I, I think it was the first first posted match report. Abusement Park versus Destiny Draw. I think uh, Buns was telling me Amusement Park is like 0-13 or 0-14 versus Japanese uh, teams. And uh, finally, they uh, are able to get a win versus uh, Japan this week. Although with a little bit of um, DC luck, uh, fortunately for Morio uh, getting that DC loss and then later Jin getting the time limit loss, although I'm not too sure about that time limit loss, whether or not he would have lost or won that duel. But any comments about this game, guys? Uh, anyone feel free to jump on in and talk about it. Yeah, I didn't watch it or anything, but this is, I mean, this was probably like the game of the week, so it's nice to see APK get a dub, I guess. I don't really have anything other than that. I mean, APK brought a lot of Blackwing. I mean, it paid off for them, but you got, they had Cairo, their leader, or like the person leading for them, ASAP, or not ASAP, but uh, Buns, straight for what, like five of it, and then Wayne in the back with Wings as well. It's a lot. I think it's interesting that uh, you draw try sent Car Curry to counter Black Wings. I don't think many, uh, any Western teams would try to like beat one aggro deck with another aggro deck. So yeah, especially noticing that they have the uh, invoked roids still in their pairing, so they didn't need to send the car curry right there. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it does show what they think about that matchup. They probably don't think it's that good for uh, roids, or perhaps the roid def deck was a little bit different than the uh, normal one with the type of aggro they played. But <clears throat> as you said, uh. Sauce. I mean, this was a pretty uh, big game this week, and uh, APK coming out with the win. Destiny draw still two and one. Both teams are two and one. In fact, I think we're gonna see later on the division standings. But the draw still uh, above APK in the division standings. Uh, I think they're third. APK is second. I uh, will take a closer look later. But moving on to the second match of the week it was 12 o'clock cheaters versus lost tribe and this one was just a complete whitewash ritual beast and black wings from lost tribe with a massive streak and 12 o'clock cheaters just having no chance this is 
the third loss in a row and a third big loss in a row. What can 12 o'clock cheaters do to come back from this? I mean, it looks like I have to work better on counterpicking because, I mean, they're sending witchcrafters in versus ritual beasts. I don't yeah. really. Witchcrafter, like, win that matchup really easy if they can play. I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't see this game, well. so I don't know. Maybe they double bricked or something like that. Um, I'm not sure, like, the hands, like, card for card. To be what fair, happened. to be fair for them, I think Fakesix just got, like, god handed. I remember at one game, he just opened Herald with the Battlefront play, so he was able to clear the field and OTK in the same turn. Yeah. So. Well, we do have uh, Mini B on the call with us, and he is a member of Lost Tribe. Mini B, I want to talk to you a little bit about this game. You weren't uh, able mm -hmm. to play in this game, but you were able to be. Uh, you know, a big voice as you are the team manager of Lost Tribe. How proud of you of your team starting two and one and one of the top teams in your division as a new team? Um, of course, I'm very proud of the team. We definitely working so hard to try to prove that we're here to compete rather than just filling the the divisions basically. Yeah, and you guys and are a off a great start. shout to the players. Yeah, David and Fake6 doing very, very good for your team this week. Now, uh, one question I do want to ask is, um, both you and uh, Senwao are you know, mm -hmm. a part of the management of your team, but both of you are also players of the team. A lot of the teams in the league, you'll see that at least the manager or the owner is a non-player one of them usually you'll see one of them is usually a non-player but for you guys it's both of you guys are players how hard is it to manage putting yourself in the lineup or putting or zen y putting himself in the lineup when you have to manage uh, that as well and making your team trust you guys not only as management but also players um well it comes with challenges of course but i think our players just trust us blindly whether as a you know, management team or as players. So that's definitely helps a lot. And it comes out, you know, because we're like a group of really tight friends. So there's no second guessing, there's no doubting. And that's really actually helpful. So shout out to the guys. Well, uh, you know, congrats again on your win. You guys, uh, oh, thank you. I think we're doing a really good job of putting your team's name out there uh, in, in Team War so far, 2-1. and one. And we're going to talk about division standings later into the Team War stock where uh, you'll get a chance to you know, talk about the season more as well. But if anyone else has any additional comments about this game, or if Mini B, you have ad comments about this game, please do uh, chime in. Yeah, just hard luck for 12 o'clock cheaters. They're really good players. They just need to focus on the strategy a little bit more. And hopefully it works out for them. Well, all right then. We're going to be moving into the third match of the week. BZ versus FM. Now this, in my opinion, was the match of the week. Um, and Herf, you actually casted this game. What was your takeaway from this match? I mean, in the first half of the war, I was like, dang, you can wrap this up. Because Sakura like, went nuts at the start. But then Forbidden Memories just stayed in there slowly climbed back in he started with like black jesus and then zeta went on a tear and then eventually i mean edu cl uh, closed it up but at 5-2 i mean you figured that bz was a, like a good team and we're going to close it out of course but then Niels had to be scared of fm with zeta and edu in the back so it's just a really exciting game to watch yeah i mean <laughs> this is one of those games where you would expect kind of more uh of a uh, close game and although it was a relatively close game you wouldn't expect two five and twos from each team uh neg i kind of want you to chime in here we don't see five game win streaks often in team wars um only maybe one to three a week but this game had two um so i think 
A lot of it comes down to like what decks are you playing and then what decks are you like playing against. So typically um usually you're seeing the decks that streak are the ones that are more consistent or like have a really high power output. It's generally not like the and then the decks that are streaking against are like the decks that could potentially brick or you know are not as reliable in a matchup. I know set uh Gaov or Gaov. I, I I still have no idea how to say it, but like um I'm pretty sure he, he bricked one of the Witchcrafter games and then the other one he opened weak. Then I think I forget I heard there was maybe a mistake in uh the Tristron game in, at the start, which may have hurt Murphy's chances, but I wasn't there, so I'm not entirely sure. Are you referring to Luca's game? Uh, for Sakura's like streak, I was just going oh. over the initial streak. Oh, streak. okay. So you're talking about with uh, a mistake with McMurphy. Uh, that's what I heard. I didn't. Okay, okay, okay. See it, so I'm not sure. Okay. okay. And then for Zeta, like Blue Eyes, it's a very high like there is high risk, but it's very powerful. Oh, yeah. It's just it's just a gamble deck. So like if you're willing to gamble, you can like be rewarded heavily. And well, he was Kara rewarded Curry, very heavily. <laughs> yeah. And then Kara Curry, I think it's like really strong. So and it's consistent, so it doesn't surprise me that it also picked up some wins. Well, you probably opened a can of worms there by saying Karakuri is consistent, but we're going to talk a little bit more about Karakuri during, uh, when we get to the TZ game. Unfortunately, it's the last game of the week, so it'll be a while till then. But, um, James, I know you have a, a couple of things to say about this game. Let's uh, hear it. Uh, what do I have to say about this game? I love games like this. I love both of these teams. This is pretty much exactly how you expect it to go. Not with FM winning, but it being close. I mean, 10 to 8 is basically the same thing as 10 to 9, right? You're on your last pair. The decision-making aspect of Team Wars is taken out of it when you're down to that, and it's really just about one person versus another person and who's going to win. So you love to see that. Uh, beyond that, you know, everything looks pretty... There's nothing really too shocking here where counter picks got sent in or anything like that. So pretty standard war. Uh, tough for BZ to lose it, but, you know, I'm sure that they're not sweating over losing a war to FM. They played well, so. All right, well, there you hear it. Uh, there it is, folks. Uh, Chirinui with five games with Sakura and then Forbidden Memories taking it with Black Wings, Blue Eyes, and Chris Jones at the very end. Moving on to the next game, we have Draw Sense versus Kings. We're going to actually have Love Train um, joining us very soon in a little bit, too. Uh, but this game was, uh, you know, very close at the start. Kings started with a 4 and 2 lead, uh, similar to last week, how they started 5 and 1 versus D Draw, but they just weren't able to hold the, uh, hold the lead. What is it about Kings that they haven't done to get them over the top this? season so far i think this is i mean from what it looks like this is another one of those classic examples of just needing to learn the format a little bit better i i mean i guess you could say starting with a dark magician lead is taking a really big risk to put it lightly i would say i mean i guess it's one of those decks that can just go off but i i don't see that as as something that you would risk leading right now. Some of their pairs are a little bit stranger, but yeah, a lot safer pairings from, from draw sense for sure. I don't know, I just found it weird that Kings are essentially getting streaked on in the back of this war and they've used no repeats. Right? So like invoke magician girls. Like you send that into counter cyber dragon to lose it. I mean, granted, Shiranui wins the next game, but why would you not repeat if that's your counter and you haven't used a repeat? Yeah, very uh, interesting. We actually haven't seen Kings use 
uh, repeats much or at all this season. If I'm not mistaken, I, I don't think, think the, we've seen one. Yeah, uh, the entire season. Uh, we do have a love train, love train now in a uh, voice call. Uh, welcome again, love train. Hello again. Yeah. So your team is three and zero. Oh. Um, how proud of you of draw sense? Well, we are very proud. Actually, it's really surprising. I mean, we didn't expect that uh, we are really good at uh, team wars right now. So we are really happy and we are very proud. So a lot of your uh, players have been doing very well this season. Not just one player, but um, Yadko has been very good in week two and week three. What is about him that makes him so good? Uh, by the way, it's pronounced Kato. Oh, sorry. But, but it's okay, it's fine. Um, yeah. Actually, he is a um, good player. Uh, what can I say more? Like, he had great performance in Chunsin's tournament. Like, he had... He plays like second place, I guess, like last week or something. I mean, he is uh, basically a good player. And our team knows it, so we put him to play like every week. First week, it didn't work well, but second week and third week, really good. So probably, yeah, he's one of the best player or he's the best player of our team, definitely. Yeah, and he's done... Uh, really well for your team, 5-2 and two this week. I noticed you guys are very uh, big on Cyber Dragon. Not many teams are playing Cyber Dragon right now, but it has one of the best win rate in Team Wars. What about Cyber Dragon do you guys like so much? I think it's about uh, more like pair, I guess. Like um, Our team had like test matches, and we found out Shiranui plus Cyber Dragon is the best. And uh, Gakuto place two decks so probably maybe cyber dragon itself is not the perfect deck but with pair with pair with shiranui it's really perfect like no one can beat it i guess i mean that's why it is good I think. yeah you can see it work perfectly in this war too with uh not to cut in but with cyber dragon losing to or shiranui losing to dark magician and then cyber dragon being able to come in and bring the streak to five wins yeah, yeah, um very good point there James. I mean they worked so well together in this match and you were able to make sure that Kings did not gain the lead again. Now in the past 2 weeks Love Train, your team has not had the best start in the war, but you've always had a very good ending in the wars. How do you guys make sure that as a new team you don't get nervous? Your players don't get nervous during the war? Actually, we are nervous all the time, but probably we were just lucky, <laughs> or I don't know. I mean, and we are just good players, so maybe, I mean, at the end, we can finish well. I don't know. Well, I, know, I don't know how long uh, we'll have you here uh, on the call. Uh, are you going to be able to stick around for later when we talk about week four, or do you want to talk about your week four match right now? Oh, uh, yep, I can stay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So we'll, uh, maybe in 15, 20 minutes, we'll talk more about your uh, week uh, four matchup. But congrats again on this win and being 3 0. Oh, thank you very much. And we're going to try best next week, too. All right. This week. Great. Yeah. So moving on to the next game, we had SEM versus Bricks and Potatoes. Um, SEM is actually 0 and 2 uh, prior to this game. And this was a much needed victory for SDM. BMP, on the other hand, was 2-0, and winning very handily versus FO last week, a 10-3 victory. Uh, and they came out not as good as they wanted to do uh, this week. 0-3 with Witchcrafters. Neg1, why was Witchcrafters not able to do it for BMP this week? I didn't get to see like all this war, but from what I've been told, SDM has like a winning record against Bricks and Potatoes. Um, just from what I've been told, like from uh, Willie and Jason, because they uh, previously on Brick, so they like are aware of the history more. 
So um, I'm not sure if it's kind of like how um, FM has a bad has had a bad history against Bricks and Potatoes. Bricks has had a bad history against SCM. I'm not sure if it's just planning or style. Uh, well, we do have just some time. Let's talk about witchcrafters in general. Um, I know I want to bring it up again when we see the uh, meta analysis and see their win percentages speak, which uh, I know you're not going to like, but why has it not been able to do as well in Team Wars when there is n no worry of side deck? I think a lot of people just don't play it correctly or like they build it in such a way that they're still building it for the old meta. I think a lot of the deck... I think some of the things have changed in the sense that um, you don't run tuners as much anymore, for example, just because I think the tuners, it can just break you a ton. Like, your normal summon is so valuable that you don't want to be spending your normal summon on a tuner, which is an extender, instead of a like a starter, which is a witchcrafter monster. All right. Anyone else have any comments about this game? Uh, not really about the game. Uh, well, besides, it's good to see SEM return to form. They've had two really tough weeks. Week one against us, you know, was a blowout for us. But again, it was one of those tough situations. Um, don't need to go further into that. But tough two weeks. Good to see them bounce back. Sucks that you know Bricks has to go down, but. This is also pretty good for Phoenix, so I'm not mad. I was going to say on the Witchcrafter <laughs> talk, though, I think both of the points that Neg made are correct. And then also when you factor that in with just Witchcrafter, obviously by getting hit on the ban list is so much less consistent now. Not, a, I mean, maybe not a ton. Maybe it's not ridiculously less consistent. But you add in those three things, and it's pretty easy to see why uh, Witchcrafter has a... I'm sure it has one of the worst win rates in Team Wars. I don't have the stats, but I would imagine. Well, we are going to see the stats uh, near the end of the stream when we're uh, going to be talking about meta-analysis. Actually, not near the end, but near the middle. Uh, we are uh, 30 minutes in right now, if you include the uh, waiting time near the beginning. So we will be uh, getting to the uh, meta-analysis within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Um, but uh, all, that's all for this match report. SCM 10-5 beating Bricks and Potatoes, getting their first win of Season 8. Next match report is Pharaohs versus God's Chosen. Another team, Pharaohs, that hasn't won yet this season prior to this game. They were 0-2, um, looking to get a win here, and they almost blew it. Um, it was a very close moment in this game uh, where it was 8-8, eight eight, I believe. And God's Chosen had a chance to get and steal the lead, but just could not do it, and Pharaohs making sure that they close this game out 10-8. to 8. They're going to be very happy with this win. And this might be the start of a momentum for them to win more games like we know Pharaohs is capable of. Any thoughts about this game, guys? Yeah, we scrim Pharaohs a lot pretty often. I mean, this team is really good. You can tell just by reading this lineup of five right here that this roster is amazing. But, I mean, it goes deeper, right? Like, their their lineup is deep. They've all been around. They're not too used to doing poorly so i would imagine this is the start of them hopefully turning things around we saw a couple maybe decisions that they were making the first two weeks that didn't look super good i don't think they used a restart through the first two weeks either was something that we noted um but yeah I, good to see them turning it around for sure or any comments about this game um i was just looking at the bottom for pharaoh's skill shot using balance sheer new yeah something you don't see very often <laughs> um, winning ultimately winning the mirror against level Og Sheer Nui, but uh, I don't know. It's just a weird thing to see, and I mean, I guess it works. So, but yeah, unfortunately uh, for Louise, he uh, bricked there, and uh, I guess you know what they say: a balance versus brick, balance always wins. Uh, so, Kill Shot kind of squeezing out with the win there near the very end, but a very interesting. Uh, Thing to see now another thing that's very interesting that I wanted to point out we'll see later on uh, when we get to the meta analysis that again GMG Shirinui was not a most played deck this week but Pharaoh's coming in with um, more than one of the deck and maybe they played three we won't know since we didn't get to see um, 
Yen Storm's second deck, but it really did put him uh, put in a lot of work uh, for Pharaohs, and potentially was one of the reasons they were able to win this war. What difference do you think GMG Sharon Nui made in this war, guys? Neg one. Well, we don't have too much to say, but uh, I think it's interesting that they had a level dupe list and a balance list for Pharaohs. Um, generally, you see like teams, they might not have the exact same build, but generally they'll agree to like, like uh, if two Shira are running, if you're ha if you have two Shira, unless they're like serving different purposes, you're going to be on either both level log or both level dupe. Yeah, and we did, like you said, see the variance there, and it, at least for this game, it did pay off for them. They went 3-1 and one with the GMG Sharanui's, um, but also Karakori and Dark Magician giving them two wins apiece. God's Chosen also went 2-1 and one with GMG Sharanui, but no um, success with RB or that Cosmic Enlightenment Witchcrafter deck, uh, which uh, I think has falsely gotten popularity. More of a meme tech. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I posted on Twitter, and then everyone's thinking it's some some real deck, but it's just a meme. <laughs> just a fun deck. But I think Wower took the deck a little bit too seriously, and uh, I mean, I don't even know why the repeat was made. Maybe the second deck was extremely weak to Karakuri. I think the issue really was that. The second deck of that combo needed to be prepared for Karakuri, especially versus a team like Pharaohs that really does believe in Karakuri as a deck, unlike many other teams in the league that don't really believe in it. I think that was the difference maker in this game. That going 0-2, um, I believe that really should have been a 1-2. and Even if Wauer decided that, yeah, I want to play Cosmic Enlightenment, that second deck needed to be a strong Karakuri counter, uh, whatever they imagine it to be it seems like Christron's was what they thought it was because that's what they sent in right after i think that was a difference maker in this war and god's chosen are gonna definitely need to get back in a winning position they're one and two right now so not the worst but can't be losing that lead that must absolutely correct in the chat let's move on to the next game divine versus switcheroo uh very uh <laughs> lopsided game but also uh a, a game that took a bit longer than it should have due to um, timer issues from, from Divine. Uh, really not much needed to say about that, but I think the big takeaway from this war is Cyber Dragon. Uh, once again, you know, we were asking Love Train earlier about Cyber Dragon, and we see it again from another team, and it did well. And not only did it do well for one player, but it did well for two players. Uh, if I want to ask you about Cyber Dragon a little bit, what you, what do you think about Cyber Dragon and why has it been doing so well? Well, I think Cyber Dragons is a deck that like you never know <laughs> what you're gonna get out of it, but if you draw like your combo, I mean you're not really losing to anything in the meta right now. Like if you go first with like your combo, I mean you should be winning versus pretty much everything. Which means it's like a very, as Nick like talked earlier, it's, it's not super high in consistency, but it's very, very high in potential power output. So it gives you a, an ability to streak super crazy, like in this. Yeah, decks like that are better when, like for example, since Shirik is back in the meta really hard now, there's two different kinds. I know the combo Shir is a lot better against Dark Magician, but now Dark Magician seeing elevated play. Because Dark Magician seeing play where, you know, for example, Divine brought two. I, I'm sure other teams have been bringing two. Two seems like a pretty decent number for what teams are bringing currently. Like, you can stick in a Cyber Dragon or two because even though it is one of those, you know, high-risk, high-reward decks, you have a pretty solid matchup against Dark Magician regardless. So you can go into that knowing that, you know, at worst, you're probably going to be a one for one but let's say you draw busted this might turn into you know three or four wins that you shouldn't have got otherwise which can really turn the tide completely on a team wars game 
Yeah, well said. Uh, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely turned the tides. Uh, I mean, sure, Nui was already three and zero, and that put Divine in a very tough position. But it didn't help that no repair was not done yet, and won four more. Uh, with Cyber Dragon, definitely a player of the week level performance, and I know the awards committee is going to be looking at this game in specific and determining whether or not um, this was the player of the week performance. But Butcher really uh, benefiting hardcore from this win after a loss last week. Uh, I forgot who they lost to, but I know they're two and one right now with very pleasant R and D. So they're in a pretty good spot. They're not worried, I know for sure. And uh, I suppose that's it. Twitch Root 10 2 for Divine. That was the end of the games on Saturday. And now we're going to be moving into the Sunday games. And it started right off with one of the anticipated matches of the week Duelings Taiwan versus Rookies. Both of these teams, one of the best from each respective region, uh, Taiwan for Duelings Taiwan and Rookies uh, being from Japan one of the historically top Japanese teams in Team Wars. And it was, again, another late game run that we've witnessed from rookies, just like uh, one of the earlier weeks this season. And it was Lighting Neck, uh, again this season, for the second time, a last man standing streak, this time with Karakuri. Neg1, why was this able to happen? Uh, PLDR, uh Karakuri best deck. <laughs> I, we'll probably go into that later, so I'll keep it short now. All right, well, you have a very good point. Can't argue against that, right? Gave me so much evidence for your... No, I'm just joking. Yeah, we're going to talk about it later. Um, yeah, no, we're definitely going to talk about it later when we discuss the Tier 0 match report. Um, but, man, I think the most interesting thing about this game was the fact that we saw Dragoonity. And he won a game. <laughs> Think about that. I didn't uh, even see that. Oh, yeah, wow. Majestic yeah. Light. I don't even know what that skill does. Is that the one that you get the tuner? Uh, you switch it back a uh, tuner, and then you get the level one uh, what Majestic. The fuck? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Wow. I, I think it has to be a level one tuner, though. You have to switch out a level one tuner. Uh, I think I so. Think so. Yeah. I if I remember, yeah, correctly, I can it's check right tuner. Now. Otherwise, that would be too broken of a skill. I'm pretty sure that's that's why it's not popular. It's because it has to be a level one tuner, and very few decks play level one tuners. Um, Let's see think. here. Yeah. Uh, it can be used by returning one tuner monster in your hand to your deck. Yeah. Play Majestic Dragon from your deck. Oh wow, it's not level. Oh okay. Any tuner, and you get a level one. Tuner. Yeah, yeah it's just that uh, Majestic level. Dragon um, the restrictions are like uh, you can only use it for a Majestic Synchro. Um, so like you're never using it. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't I, even know the use of this kill in the deck, really. Yeah, I think we're going to... We're going to have to watch that VOD uh, eventually. I wish we had more time today. We definitely... I'd actually pull up the VOD and check that game out but unfortunately we are uh crunched on time today unfortunately maybe uh i do recommend you guys to check out the bot it's going to be on twitch.tv slash duelings team wars the channel that you're watching right now it should be somewhere there uh someone can post the link in chat if you guys want to watch rewatch that but after this stream you definitely don't want to watch right now we have a lot of action for you here but man karakuri beating shiranui Blackwings twice, Hero, and then Invoked Magician Girls. And it's just insane that this man, Lightning, Lightning, has done two last man standings already with four or more wins. Actually, I think he's gotten five or more wins both times in already just three weeks of the season. Insane. He's probably up there for Player of the Month. Uh, if I have to say it right now, I'm not a part of the words committee, but I'm going to say Is this his first season or this person's first season? You know what? I'm not sure. Xerix, I know, is in the chat and so is Novo. Both of them are on the awards committee, so maybe they can comment about it. I think Apps is also in the chat, so he might know as well. But that okay, is never... Under a different name. That's crazy, though. That's good to see. You never know who's going to go off for rookies. That's one of the crazy things about this team. You never know what deck it's going to be, and you never know who it's going to be. They come well, from uh, all angles. 
one thing is for sure uh, a lot of people are going to be looking at whether or not they want to put lightning on their fantasy league team after what he's done so far <laughs> definitely very insane and top level but rookie's taking it 10 to 8 going on to the next one my versus tune squad herf is in the call with us he's a member of tune squad and he clapped this week for tune squad four and two herf how does it feel for your team to finally get a win after the adversity you guys have faced as a new team first of all second of all how does it feel to open four and two in team wars it's something that very few people can say they've done before well, I mean, to answer the first question, we played very close wars against Garuda, and then last week we lost uh, a 10-9 versus Diffusion, which are also a very, very strong team. So, I mean, we always, I mean, we've known that we have, like, top potential and that we're a very good team, but then it's just nice to get results to prove it. And then as for the start, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I maybe shouldn't have done this well because... uh I mean, they led Cyber Dragons, which is very risky pick. Maybe got lucky by being able to lead Ritual Beasts. And then the uh, there was, uh, I would say, an unfortunate misplay from the Witchcraft versus Dark Magician matchup. But in the end, I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> well, uh, you put your team in a very strong position to win, but then Black Wings with uh, Belissa was able to win three games in a row. How, you know, to, to tie it up, how kind of monk S was your team trying to deal I mean, with that Black Wings deck? I mean, we brought Roids specifically for Black Wings uh, just because we believe that it's a very good matchup for Roids, having a searchable kite Roid, having lots of back row, stuff like that. Made a couple of unfortunate misplays, and then that allowed them to kind of streak and get back in the match. Uh, we made a, I would say, a pretty questionable counter pick bringing uh, Drancy in with Heroes instead of his other deck with Sheer Nui. Then ultimately, Buns closed it out. I mean, we were pretty scared of Doctor at the back, as we know he likes to anchor for them, and he's arguably one of the best players in Team Wars every single season. But my boy Buns out the back didn't let him have anything. Yeah, not to be confused with Buns with an S, but this one is Buns with the Z. Both of them clap, and as we saw, this... Buns with the Z, 3-0 and with Heroes. Not a very popular deck nowadays in Team Wars. Nonetheless, with Sealed Tombs, uh, interesting choice, but it paid off nonetheless. And you guys won 10-8. to Congrats on your first win in Team Wars against a pretty good team. Yeah, I think they've been pretty unlucky this season. I mean, they're 0-3 now. And I mean, the roster doesn't in no way reflect an 0-3 team, so I'm sure that they will be back with a vengeance well they have also had uh you know tough weeks they played against uh dueling uh taiwan and then duel uh and then rookies i believe so mm -hmm. far and then obviously as we can see on the screen they played you guys this week so not the easiest three weeks for them so far i think things are going to get maybe a bit you know easier for them as time comes on they're just playing monster houses and and um obviously toon squad I know you guys have not been as good as your expectations, but you guys have definitely ex exceeded many expectations. Like you said, many close wars and not able to just close those out in certain situations, but definitely being able to do that this week. And all credit to your team for learning from those past mistakes from the first two weeks and closing it out this week. But uh, 10 and 8, Toon Squad winning it versus MY. And we are now going to move on to Diffusion versus Garuda. Diffusion was 2 and 0 prior to this game, and they lost 7 to 10. Garuda with a five game win streak with Ritual Beasts, one of them being a DC win. Very unfortunate for Drizzles, who I know is in the chat right now. He probably has a few things to say about this game. But. Garuda now 2-1, and, and Diffusion also now 2-1. and one. Any thoughts about this game, guys? I mean, typical Garuda stuff, or is this something else? James? Uh, yeah, you know I love Garuda. Um, 
And it looks like it was, I, I've never known how to pronounce this, but melt is what I'm just going to say. Going off with Ritual Beast. Yeah, I don't know what happened on that DC loss. That could have been, oh, it looks like Drizzles is saying now, DC with Alistair Imication and Roy Fieldspell. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Um, I mean, that makes a huge difference, right? Because if you brick to the next game after that, and then you guys send did. in another one. Yeah, that, I mean, taking out three invoked droids in a row like that just to lose to one when that's clearly your counter is is definitely tough, knowing that you lost it on a DC. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say also this is typical Garuda stuff. Garuda always kind of flies under the radar, and then, you know, you catch them in a match against potentially the best team in Team Wars right now. They have the, the current champions, and they they take a W. Love to see it. Yeah, and bro, it's uh, four games in a row that it had to deal with the Ritual Beast, and it took the fourth game to, to win uh, against the Ritual Beast, and it immediately fell after to Karakuri, but... Um, yeah, you. those are such frustrating situations to be in as a team on VC, too, so I can only imagine, you know, how drastic it was for Defusion. Definitely, definitely. And uh, there you have it, guys. Garuda winning 10-7. to uh, Not much else really to say about this uh, war. Um, and we really do want to try to speed and get into that meta analysis. We're almost there. Neo versus Immortals. Uh, another close uh, game for the most part in the war. But that three-game win streak with Darchio making the difference here. And we've seen a common trend now. Something we haven't seen in the past two weeks as we did these Team Wars talks is Arakori streaking a lot this week. Um, perhaps teams saw in week one and week two, obviously, the ban list came in effect, but last week people saw Karakuri just not doing well with like a 40-something percent win rate. Maybe people lowered their radar with the deck and the deck came back even stronger this week and we'll see that reflected on the meta-analysis, but... That really was the turning point of this war, uh, as it was even at that point at five to five, and then Darcio just taking the win three to three to two performance, and Immortals winning ten to seven. I'm gonna just move on to the next one, just so we can get to that meta analysis real quickly. Now we do have FO versus Phoenix. I know you guys, uh, James, are very close with the. FO guys here, but uh, when you're in the battle, no one's your friend except for the card on top of your deck. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we love FO. Hideki is my boy. I need to cast some more streams with him. Hopefully he's in the chat. I love you guys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've only, you know, my team's only had a bad season one time before last season, and we disbanded off of that. So it's really, I can't tell you how nice it is to see Phoenix starting 3-0 again. That's a trend that we've kind of set for ourselves. Starting off 3-0 uh, undefeated through the first three weeks. And feels good to be back at that level and, you know, be out of last season. So I guess there's nothing really more to say besides that. They played a great game. Uh, we ended up having that SSA Christron at the back. Metal Overdrive plays that deck like a surgeon. It's It's insanely fun to watch. And he just did what he does best. Yeah, and uh, it was actually a close war up until uh, Metal Overdrive came in with the SSA Crystrons, and they really just had no answer for it. Like you said, he uh, really uh, meticulously uh, got that streak going. Five and two, uh, not last man stand. Oh, sorry, five and one, not last man standing, but definitely a solid performance. How proud of you are how proud are you of metal overdrive so far this season yeah i mean it, it's tough to find a better you know i keep saying you know but it's tough to find a better chris John player than metal overdrive i love having him on the roster because we know at any point in time with how long chris has been in the meta you know we're going to be able to have one of the premier chris John players going in i also want to say really quick like dark magician has just been absolutely screwing phoenix non-stop <laughs> in clan wars and in team war like just in general we can't open well we only play against uh dark magician opening combo with karma cut they don't even have to run balance they're just opening it it's been nuts so um i think both of these 
with wins with Dark Magician, we opened uh, Combo and Karma Cut. So it's it's a really good feeling to be on that end of the uh, of the insect deck for once. <laughs> yeah, and I know uh, Neg one uh, with a little chuckle there, knowing uh, exactly how Dark Magician works. He has uh, very uh, opinion opinionated feelings about the uh, about Dark Magician. We can talk about it a little bit because it's not going to show up on the meta analysis. Not very. Uh, much played deck, but Negwa and I mean, which crafters usually in Team Wars was the reason Dark Magician was one of the reasons Dark Magician fell off because once you had witch crafters, there was really no reason to play DM. But Shiranui coming up a little bit, witch crafters falling off quite a lot. DM is coming back surely, slowly but surely. I don't know about the surely part, but what say you about this rise of DM? Resurgence, I should say. Um, they'd have to like ban Vary for me to play DM. There's just no way. Like... <laughs> well, I mean, you see both teams bringing DM here and DM winning two games for both teams. Obviously, you know that's that's a ver that's a very situational uh, observation. But do you think it has a place in Team Wars? I think. Uh, DM, like um, many other decks, has a function. It's just, I think, other decks or, like, there are one or more decks that serve the same function, either more consistently or, like, I don't have to pray every time I draw my cards with DM yeah. or with these other decks. Whereas with DM, it's like, you could play or you could just not, you know? Yeah, I agree completely, 100%. DM sucks. <laughs> all right well we are going to go into the next game infinity versus claw clan claw clan one of those teams that a lot of people had their eyes on near the beginning of the season uh, just because they have been one of the teams with a very formidable roster but hasn't been able to translate that into wins uh, in the past three seasons last season they were two and eight but so far this season, they're 2-1 and one now. And Ma, their star player, has been a huge part of both of those wins so far. And he won 6 with SSA Crystrons versus Infinity. Coming back after being down 6-3. and three. Insane. I mean, what can we really say about Ma other than how great of a player he is? I mean, Ma is an amazing player, but you look at also the people around him, they're all amazing players as well. Uh, so I don't want to take anything away from Ma. I mean, he's obviously amazing. But you got like Kurosuke, Jack, Rucho, like all these players are really good in their own right as well. So, I mean, it's, I would say it's a lot about the people that like are able to sit there and learn from them as well. It's really important. Well, Neg1, I know you uh, have chatted a little bit uh, about Ma and I think with Ma too uh, you know in the past one to two years as he's risen you know amongst the KC all-time ranks uh, what is your thoughts about Ma and his p impact on a team like Clockland? Ma it's interesting because out of all the uh, the KC Cup winners like I have actually talked to Ma the least so I'm actually um, I'd be interested in to like learn more about him but i think it, he does practice a lot from what i've seen or what i've heard he does like um do a lot of testing if like he wants to learn a deck he will just put in the time to figure it out so um i i respect the ethic well uh you know he definitely just Came out strong this week again. I think he has one of the best records in the league now, too. Last week, I think he was last man standing. This week, not last man standing, but 5-2 and two near the back end of that roster. Really putting in a, his team in a position to, to win the war. And uh, Kurosuke, Kurosuke coming in as the last player to clinch the win, getting rid of Infinity's level dupe. Tristron deck, not a popular skill for that deck. 
but nonetheless getting that win. 10-8 Claw Clan. Infinity is now 0-3, I believe. Or are they 1-2? I'm actually not sure. I want to actually check on that. Yeah, Infinity is 0-3. Um, but uh, Claw Clan now 2-1. And, and they are 4th in their division. In your division, actually, Sauce. You guys haven't played them yet, right? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Yeah, we haven't played them yet. That's definitely the game that we're looking forward to after this this week with BMP. Yeah, and we'll. Uh, oh, I'm looking forward to that game. You are, you already know I'm trying to stream that game, but it's gonna uh, be great. Um, moving on to the next game, X Factors versus Smogon Duel Links. Uh, I know we always have some Smogon members in the chat during these talks, but Smogon just hasn't been the same this season. I gotta say, man. Since their start in season four, when they came as a new team, winning that season, season five was really rough for them. I think they were three and seven. Season six for them, they were six and four, made the playoffs. A very typical of the Smogon that we know uh, and they're capable of. But so far this season, I know they're one and two, but that one and two just seems like a shaky one and two. They haven't seem the same uh, maybe my expectations are too high but what are your guys's opinion on them no this team is still really good they're still willing to take the right kind of risks i i mean it's one of those situations where you have to look at who they're playing to right just because we're only three weeks in like some teams that are zero and three or one and two have also already played you know the three hardest teams that they're gonna play all season and i think smogon is in that boat they played x factors they played us and I can't remember Infinity. The other team. Okay, yeah, and, and they beat Infinity. So their two losses right now are to the second and third best ranked teams in the entire league right now by um, standings, by, you know, win and then RD. So I you can't really look at it too strongly. There's still a lot of season left, and Smogon, I think, personally, is still a really strong team to watch out for. Yeah, I definitely agree. They have they have they have the capability. It's just, you know, you know what happened in week one versus Infinity. Uh, you remember that? I mean, it was a. Uh... That yeah, it was supposed to go to Infinity for sure. That yeah, you know, just a little bit of bad luck from Infinity and a ton of good luck uh, for Smogon. That situation happening, and then week two, um, a bit unfortunate for them too. I mean, the Phoenix Smogon game. Much to talk about that. And then finally, again, this week, uh, it does seem like they didn't have that luck that they needed from Witchcrafters. <laughs> Obviously, Witchcrafters not performing as well as they wanted them to. But it makes you really question uh, the legitimacy of Witchcrafters in Team Wars, uh, especially as a deck that you bring three or more of, as they did bring uh, three, at least that we can see. They also didn't draw too well with their Black Wings as well for any that did watch the game it yeah. was a late late uh night match uh, but i do think it's going to be interesting to see how smogon fights back because they're one of the teams one of the few teams in my opinion that are able to adjust to new metas much better than other teams i would say i can maybe count that those type of teams on only two hands that can adjust right. immediately after ban thing. list yeah and we saw that in season four we saw that in season six um, so far, we haven't seen that um, adjustment on paper, on paper, and paper just basically means match reports uh, this season so far. But I'm, you know, really hoping to see them at, at that top tier level that we all know them to be on. But um, hopefully, you know, they can get that clean win that they've been seeking for this season. season. And I know they're going to be making adjustments for week four. Uh, maybe that adjustment... Starts with a K and ends with an E. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Um. <laughs> Kamikaze time, baby. <laughs> Obviously, that's that's half half a joke. But I I do want to see him play again. One of my favorite players to watch. But uh, I I think you know they're they're not on. It's I think it may be too soon to to you know hit the uh, you know emergency switch. Uh, this at this time, but definitely they're. On high alert, being one and two uh, at this point in the season with a, a 
pretty negative R and D. They really don't want to be in that position. So a mountain to climb for them, but hopefully we can see them bounce back. But on the other side of the coin, we have X Factors. X Factors, man, they 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 continue. They're continuing where they left off last season. Uh, they had an unfortunate loss in the finals. Uh, unfortunate from their perspective. Um, in the finals against Diffusion, obviously the way we saw it is that Diffusion just completely played on another level uh, preparation-wise uh, against X-Factors in the final, but they're coming back with, with the taste of redemption. Um, they've just been dominating every team that they play against, and Saku has been a big part of that domination. He's one of the top players this season by record, uh, and He's given a lot of people fantasy points just by people just putting them on their team. I'm really excited to see X-Factors back in the playoffs, and right now they're on the road to maybe even win the division. But 10-5 to X-Factors smoke on. We only have a few match reports to do. I think only like three. I want to point out something. Yes, really go ahead. Right before you jump. Uh, it's kind of crazy to note, but it, it was 5-5 five, five for smoke on X-Factors before Combo Shiranui came in and won four in a row. And that was the exact same scenario that we had with them uh, last week. So they lost the same way two weeks in a row. Kind of interesting. To the same day. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Although, I, I think um, Ali's deck was quite different with the Dicets. Um, it was a different style of the GMG Shiranui. But you're right. Yeah, the archetype, the your point still stands. The archetype was still the same and you know maybe it says a little bit about them overestimating matchups perhaps um i know you know resilene was talking in the chat about bricks and you know my personal opinion uh and i've been very outspoken about this since day one of team wars when i started in season I, i'm gonna take away season one because in my opinion that's just a completely different meta and format but season two since i you know got exposure to this league and you know began in this league uh, with whatever you know participation that i had or involvement i'm f i'm a firm believer is that, of that if luck is your number one if if you if your list of reasons to why you lost the war and luck is at the top of that list then the fact that you have luck at the top of that list is the reason you lost and you don't deserve to win i'm a very firm believer in that i think any team that blames losses on luck uh, is doesn't deserve to win. Um, like the team wars or doesn't deserve to win uh, a, a long stretch of games. Now you can definitely put luck and say it on one game. You can say it on two or three games. But if you say that, and I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying Resilin said this in the chat or any Smogon member said this. I'm just saying this in general uh, because the reason I'm mentioning this is because I think that Smogon has to make adjustments. Um, they got unlucky with Witchcrafters this week they got unlucky with Black Wings this week and even if that happened there still has to be adjustments to make whether that's player changes or deck changes that's my personal opinion maybe they disagree with that but I, I don't yeah, think I, I couldn't agree with you more I don't, unless it's a 10 and 9 situation um, and uh, you know it, you're talking about that last game where it was a coin flip Karakuri match and, you know, Karakuri went first and they won because of that. You could say, like, oh, luck was a big part of why, why they won. Like, you could say that, but you can't really put luck at the top of the list either way. There's always things you do well and there's always things you do bad. Um, whether yeah. it's Clan Wars or Team Wars, there's, you can't ever blame things on luck, at least at the top of the list. It can't you just be on... don't want to leave everything to luck. That's the big thing, right? Like, luck, we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Luck is coming into play. Of course. Every game, every time, every hand. But how much you leave to luck is what you can adjust within your own lineup. Exactly. And that's how you really need to make the changes. That's how you end up being a team that's successful season in, season out, through all these different right. metas, through all these roster changes. You have to be able to adapt. Yeah, and I want to, again, com be completely clear. Just I wanted to mention this in the talk today, and I just found that this was a good opportunity to mention it just because I saw Smogon had so many breaks. And again, I'm not trying to say that they think that they lost because of luck. Uh, I really don't want to send that message. Uh, it's just I think it's a good opportunity to mention that and give this as a message to all teams that are listening in right now from my personal perspective. 
which I believe to be true. And uh, again, James, you're talking about it too. You also would say that's true, but um, I, I really think that um, it, it, it depends on how you play the game. And there's a reason why it's a 10 deck war and it's not a five deck war. Uh, and a lot of preparation from the strategy t standpoint does matter. And if you put your pos yourself in a position where you're playing decks that are very dependent on those higher ceiling hands to perform well and win matchups, then you know it's it's on the team to do that. Yeah, correct for sure, definitely the case. And you know the I think your main point in wanting to say it this week is because right now you might be zero and three, but seven and three makes it into playoffs, right? Seven and three makes it into playoffs easy. Yeah, six and four does. The season's not over, so. Right. This is the time that you need to make those checks. Exactly. You need to look at you and make those adjustments. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I think both of these teams that we can see right now still have a very good chance of making the playoffs. X Factors, of course, is well on their way to make it uh, if they continue what they're doing. But uh, Smogon, I know they're going to make adjustments. They're, uh, they're at the base level of it all. They have experience and they're a good team and they know what they need to do. Uh, it's as simple as that. I know, I know they know what they need to do. Um, it's just a matter of execution uh, on the day, and I think they'll be able to do it next week, uh, whoever they play against. But <laughs> we did spend a little bit on this game. We'll move on to the next. Tier 0 versus X-Hunters. Uh, the last game of the week, Neg 1. Uh, we uh, have a 90% OCD friendly uh, match report on the left side there. Uh, Mythyard kind of ruining it at the end, but you didn't get to play this game. A lot of uh, fantasy people are very upset about that, but I mean, you guys got the win that you needed this week. A dream situation and for victory. And uh, yeah, what are your thoughts about it? Uh, well, Kirk, are you best deck? Um, <laughs> so to actually unpack the meme and like be more serious, uh, like our team tests a lot, and um, we. After last season, we didn't do very well, and we would we really want to do well this season, so we've been like preparing a lot more. And something we felt like uh, Kara Curry is just really strong in this format. Um, it's like a, a lot of people will complain about consistency, but like it's consistent enough. And if you bring multiple Kara Curry, it should even out throughout the games. So. That's why we had Jason on double car curry. And then Chris, he made a good attempt. Um, uh, so, like, car curry, it can streak, it can counter decks. Like, I feel like it serves a lot of the functions that a lot of other decks might. Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Go on. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I thought uh, I dropped from the call or something. No, 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 you're um, good. I just wanted to let you say everything you wanted to say. Okay. Um. So yeah, it can streak, it can counter. It has like a lot of functions. <laughs> so, um, as a side, like last week we lost to um, we lost a lot of games to Edu running Crystrons. So an adapt adaptation we made was just to main deck Necro Valley. <laughs> Because um, uh, you look at a lot of the decks people might try to counter Karakuri with. It's like Ghost Meets Girl Shira and uh, Crystrons. I think like a lot of the um, match reports, people would counter Karakuri with Crystrons. And if you just like main deck Necro Valley, it's like such a major threat that um, from what I heard, they were scared to bring in the Crystrons early because they knew we had Necro Valley. And because if their counter is like scared to go in, then that's like really good because you can pick up steam and like rack up a ton of wins against decks that have other functions and like it makes it your other decks like safer. Yeah, and for those that actually missed the game, um, it was definitely a uh, a delight to cast. Uh, I casted with a uh, lamp posted and uh, Raya Restar. But um, one thing I do want to talk about is the uh, 
level of bling that Jason Jason showed off during the game. Two prismatic merchants, one prismatic Nanishi, one prismatic Ballista Squad, one prismatic Necro Valley. Am I missing something? One prismatic burrito. Uh, burrito. Yeah. I mean, not only did he clap them, but he clapped them with style. I mean, this is the one of the highest level of disrespect I've seen during games. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Neg? Is it a... I mean, you guys have won Fair Play Award. Uh, you kind of might have disqualified yourselves from that this season with, with Jason doing that. Well, um, we were trying to get Fair Play Award back by sending Chris in, but uh, uh, results <laughs> may vary. Um, but <laughs> actually, in VC, we were... Um, uh, Jason was like... He wasn't listening, but like... Um, in VC, we were... Like mentioning all the prismas, and we were we were just thinking like, man, he's not even he's not really pay to win. He should have like the prismatic fiendish chains, you know. So yeah, and you I, can't you can't satisfy one percent. <laughs> so guys, I do. Uh, I know we don't show vods a lot on the um, on Team Wars talks, but I have to show you guys the vods a little bit of the. The VOD here. Um, I'm going to put it up on the stream. So this is the uh, Tier 0 X Hunters VOD. I just want to show you guys a little bit about Jason's, uh, how he kind of opened, playing on times 2 speed right now. So this was the uh, very first game. He opens Merchant with level 5 uh, in hand. And you can see that that's a, uh, as you can see on the uh, left here, that's a Prismatic Merchant. And uh, he was going second, and he played this very well. He's playing around needle sealing. I think he read the delays as needle sealing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Negwan. I, I, I'm sure you had the perspective a lot better than me since you were obviously with them. But also the prismatic and Inishi. And I mean, at this point, which buffering, at this point, this game was just so over uh, with knowing that it was needle sealing. He played that very perfectly, and he had the back row to deal with the uh, monsters that cosmic flare had but we then went on to the next game that he lost in brick but i want to go skip ahead to when he pulled out blair with obviously restart again we were all surprised he was playing double karakuri actually cosmic with a, cosmic flare with a little bit of bling too playing the prismatic squire but uh he went star eater here and this is when we were all surprised we saw the necro valley here and we were like oh my god he's main decking necro valley and knowing this matchup, Necro Valley is one of the best cards to play against Shiranui, especially as Karakuri. And uh, it really did hurt Cosmic Flare a lot. And he was able to win um, this game as well. The next game, he uh, got to get that turn one. I, I want to show you guys the, uh, the hands that... <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm basically trying to show that. Um, so this was his turn. He's going second here. Uh, this the second and only, uh, sorry, the second and final game that he went second. He went first in all the other games, but playing Ballista Squad as well, uh, which is a very interesting choice, not popular right now in Karakuri. So you can see that they had really put in thought into this deck and the way that they built it. And having the CC there, I mean, at this point, Cosmic Flare top decking, and it was a bit of a poke war for a little bit, and then eventually... Jason getting the win. And, you know, rightfully so, x Hunter's taking a long time to think about what they were going to do and what they were going to send in. And they sent in Blind Bandit. But, I mean, look at this turn one. Not only did he open full combo, but he opened it with prismatic fashion. With a prismatic burrito as well. And, I mean, only one set, but, man, against RB and having CC, I believe, on the... Oh, this was actually very interesting here. So he, he shows the Prismatic Necro Valley. And I learned something new from this war. Uh, Lion Bandit had um, Ambush set. And I didn't realize actually that Ambush was negated by Necro Valley, or at least the uh, effect was, because you get one from the graveyard and one from the Banish Pile. And I thought he was going to live here. But as you can see, since he is targeting and trying to remove something from the graveyard to another place, the uh, Necro Valley uh, didn't allow him to really do that. So... Uh, and this is where it kind of started. I mean, there you go. <laughs> Merchant again. And, and this is why, you know, 
Neg1 was saying earlier that it's one of the most consistent decks. And as I do play the rest of this VOD, I want you to elaborate on that Neg1 and tell me why you think it's one of the most consistent decks when many people would say the exact opposite. Uh, um, we just like did the math and it's like, like everybody complains about like rebreaking and yeah, that will happen, but like, um, it's consistent enough that you can just like accept that part of it's part of the game that you will rebrick. It's like, um, it's just more black and white. Like, if you brick with a different deck, maybe you can set some cards as bluffs. Um, like, it's not as bad. It's, like, not as bad to brick with other decks, but it's not as good to open well with other decks. And, like, you're going to be playing more games where you open well than you open bad, so you may as well play the deck that does the most when it does open well. Yeah, and, you know, after that... You know, after he got rid of uh, Blind Bandit's uh, two decks, he just went first every game, and he just... It, it makes you think, really, like, when the deck goes first, it's almost unbeatable when it opens the yeah, full combo. Yeah, it's no bad matchups. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember you saying, um, to me, prior to the ban list, that at the time, Karakuri, when it went first, it was almost a tier zero deck if it opened the full combo with back row. And uh, given the ban list, now that the deck is playing powerful traps now, one would argue they, their turn one actually got a lot better. You could argue that the only thing that changed is going second got worse. Right. <laughs> going second did get worse, but it didn't really matter for Jason because he won those duels regardless. You can see here, I mean... He was a broken record player at this point, just opening that full combo all the time. And I don't mean to knack on him because he played extremely well throughout, and especially the first games versus Cosmic Flare. It really demonstrated mastery of those of those matchups. But um, you guys can definitely check the VOD out. I think it is posted in Dueling's Team Wars. Um, actually, I can show you guys that real quick. It's posted in uh, past matches right here. You see all the week three channels here. Um, but yeah, definitely a very good win, Negwan. I mean, you guys are looking like you're in a good spot finally uh, after a very tough week two loss. How confident do you feel about this season now? Um, I, I feel like we know what we're going to do. And it's like um, we have like a good game plan. And like we're practicing a lot more than we were last season. so. I'd say fairly confident. Well, uh, we are now done with the Tier 0 and X Hunters uh, match report. Tier 0 winning 10 to 4. We can finally now talk about the meta analysis. Karakuri, uh, once again, the most played deck. But with a better win rate this time, the top four most played decks were Karakuri, Blackwings, Shirnu, and Crystrons, just like last week. But um, when we do look at the matchup table, Karakuri with a 51.4% win rate. First time 50% or higher this season. Negwan, do you think it has a lot to do with Jason's eight wins? <laughs> I think it contributed. Uh, I think it's a good deck. So to me, it's not surprising that it did well. Just say that. Das, you want to chime in a little bit about it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing else to say besides that you guys went over it pretty well on that, on watching Jason's plays. Like, it's just a really good deck. It's a really good deck that most teams are bringing a few of, I would imagine, or should be. It's insane. Now, again, Sidra not being one of the most played decks. Um... Only 18 times played, but 12 wins out of the 18 played. That's... You want to do the math for me real quick? That's an insane win rate. Um, 67%. Is this a deck that's being slept on? Or no? No, not really. I don't think so. 
the third week um, in a row that this deck has had higher than a 55% win rate. I mean, if you look at how many, like, level logs you're new are out right now, for, uh, for Cyber Dragons, they basically need to go first with full combo, or they have to go second with Herald to win, which isn't really, uh, I don't know, those aren't odds that I would want to bet on. Given that level Aug is the mo level Aug sure is one of the most played decks. Yeah, like I said, it's great to come in on a Dark Magician, and you know you pretty much are going to get your win from that if you're just using your Sidra as your as your DM counter pick. If that's something that you feel like you need to bring against the team you're playing against, but you know, <clears throat> as uh, Neg said, some teams don't even play Dark Magician, so you got to kind of look at it like that. I think if you ask any Western team, like they're not gonna like Sidra, but if you ask any Eastern team, they're gonna be fine with it. So Yep, that's pretty accurate. It seems like from the match reports. Yeah, and we'll actually <laughs> Witchcrafter nineteen percent. <laughs> we actually missed a game. Um apologies. It was the final game of the week. I thought tier zero X Hunters was the final game of the week, but actually the final game of the week was um Follow this again. Final game of the week was uh, Sun Clan versus Death Row, and uh, Sun Clan going really strong this this season after a weak season last season. Um, and they won uh against Death Row, ten to seven. Nog clapping once again, five and two this time. Jirnui and Black Wings, and uh, I think. It was kind of over at that point. Uh, when you open five and one, you have one player just take half the team. I mean, you guys know really well, but that's okay. a lot of pressure. Yeah, you're relying on. I mean, you're relying on five decks to take eight. Uh, that's opening better than winning two is a lot of pressure. A lot right. of pressure anyway. Opening five is crazy. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be. Death Row is 0-3 now. They really, really uh, want to get a win now. They open, I think they started 1-3 last season, and they're kind of on track to do the same again this season, fortunately for them. But some, some adjustments need to be made, uh, whether it is the way they're playing or the way that um, the strategy is being employed or executed. Something needs to be changed. Um, obviously, if you're 0-3, you're not doing something right um yeah sure knew he lead on double car curry and then black i mean they played it so perfectly i mean death row played it really poorly more than anything into their lead what was really you poorly. mentioned the double car curry what's actually very ironic about that is this game happened uh right after the x hunters uh, uh tier, zero. tier zero game ended so i mean you can kind yeah. of see where they maybe got inspiration from that double car curry potentially <laughs> uh maybe they had their own ideas with it but i i do you think they were playing Necro Valley as well? So, um, not everybody's Jason. Not yeah. Not sure. not everyone has two prismatic merchants either uh, to flex <laughs> on the other team. Wasn't able to get it done. But back to the uh, meta analysis. Uh, I know you, I keep on hiding it from you guys. I'm gonna leave the stream on this uh, percentages, the matchup table, and I want you guys on the call right now. Her, if we haven't seen you talking in a little bit, and same with you, Mini B. If you guys wanna. Tune in a little bit about the, or ta uh, chime in a little bit about the meta analysis. Feel free to. I mean, I'm kind of surprised to see um, Christrons doing as well as they do. Because, I mean, well, they are a very good deck. I mean, they can kind of be victim. I mean, because they play more than, they play a little bit more cards. They can really fall victim, especially to a lot of Dark Magician in the meta. And as we see Dark Magician rise, it's nice to see Christron doing well still. And then Shir Nui doing well. And then Blackwings had kind of a kind of a very high 1%. I mean, 57% for as many people that played them is really high. Especially for a deck that seemed, people said seemed to get more glass cannon after the ban list. But still, like doing better than ever is really interesting. Dosneg, you want to comment on any of those uh, opinions mentioned just now? Uh, so I think Blackwing's doing well is interesting. Personally, I just like 
I don't again. think it has like any function. Doing well again. This is the third week in a row they've been um above fifty percent. Yeah. For me it's surprising. I like don't think the deck is very strong or like the things it does you can do with other decks. Um I think it also gets countered harder than other decks. Uh like like it can serve a function for example, beating Dark Magician, I think in both Team Wars and Clan Wars stats, it's basically an auto win, more or less. Um, but you also have like really bad matchups, like um, I guess they invoke. Wait, no, I they actually beat Invoke Droids. That's surprising. Um, but I think against Crystrons, you actually uh, Black Queens have a terrible matchup. Despite what some people might think, uh, Shira isn't Black very Wings, good either. Yeah, like no. Christrons, like if Christrons can play, like they obliterate Black Wings because there's no counter trap to play around. I want to uh, shift the conversation a little bit to Witchcrafters, um, and while I do that, I'm gonna just a heads up to those reading this in the chat. Um, it will be posted in the Team War server later. Uh, we wanted to debut meta analysis on stream first but i'm going to show you a meta analysis of week one and you can see sorry about the uh... okay there we go you can see witchcrafters is on the top uh it's ordered by most played um and you can see witchcrafter is obviously a different meta but at the top uh then you go into week two you see witchcrafters fallen off a little bit to 28 games played 50 percent and now finally when you look at this week um at the bottom um uh, neg one do you think that they're gonna fall off and not be a top 10 play deck next week i mean it wouldn't be surprising to me if people don't play it but it's like i just think a lot of people either build it ron or play it ron or both and if you do either it like really punishes you more than other decks, just because, like, it's kind of hard to build a bad Shiranui deck. A lot of it is built itself. It's hard to bad, build a bad Blackwing deck. A lot of it builds itself. A Dark Magician, same way. A lot of these decks have been around for a while that people just already know how to build it. And then the same kind of goes for playing those decks, whereas Witchcrafter, there's, like, more information that you need to know so yeah and hey look you got top four in battle phase yesterday with the uh, witchcrafters uh draw alone though uh, i know that was one of the ideas when the ban list hit and um you uh showing success with the deck do you think that yesterday's performance was uh maybe uh do you think the deck for you may be overachieved, or do you, do you think it was right on the money? I've uh, pretty much uh, since the ban list dropped, I was like, I've been pretty consistent that I think Witchcrafter is like a top tier strategy still. I just think a lot of people don't want to learn it, or like they don't, they've tried and they're not learning it correctly, I guess. Well, yesterday was the first time I ever seen you. Uh, Playing a tournament with the Light Sworn version, or at least the uh, Recharge version. Maybe I don't follow you well enough, but do um, you think it's missing Show of Nightmares? Or do you think that we're past that now and the deck can't really use the new version of Show of Nightmares? I think it could run with Show. I can think it could run without it. I think it's like. I think the deck fun it, the deck's fine. Like a lot of people just overreacted, in my opinion. But okay, well, uh, we'll come back here next week and see what happens with uh, Witchcrafters. Uh, stream's not ending, but just uh, saying we'll see what happens next week with it. Um, I'm disappointed. I, I won't lie. As someone that does play Witchcrafters uh, myself, I really want to see it do a little bit better. I think it's a very you know, when it works. A very uh crucial deck in team wars and i've been on the record to say i think it's uh you know a top two maybe top three important deck in team wars but obviously it hasn't been able to perform to even meet that standard 19 percent is just pitiful 
Uh, but un- invoke ro- invoked roids also with a pitiful per- percentage of 32.1%. And when you look at the Black Wings matchup versus it, it didn't even do that very well. It's 16.7%. A lot of people uh, sent that in for that reason. Do you guys think that this isn't the Black Wings counter? Like, what is the Black Wings counter? People are trying to see what they can do to replace the E Sabres with, but not many teams having success with it. Mm, I mean, oh, you can go. Hmm? Oh, never mind. Um, I honestly think that Roids are better than this. However, I mean, I mean, it's just hard. I mean, I I don't know how they were played outside of my own match, but I know in my match there were a few misplays that definitely would have made a huge difference. Would have made it a lot easier to win. Um, so that was very unfortunate and should be fixed, but it's, I don't know, it just seems like a deck that doesn't have a lot of room for error because it won't have the errors. I mean, it's not a hard deck to pilot by any means, but I don't know. I think there's just a lot of weird factors because people also don't really know how to, uh, build the back row or tech for the meta either. Yeah. I mean, I'll say, I think Invoked Roids definitely has a positive matchup against Blackwing. Yeah, I don't think I it's think... like huge or anything, but this isn't really indicative of the actual yeah. matchup. This I mean, is, you, I... you sometimes have to look at these with a grain of salt anyway, but go ahead, Nick. Yeah, uh, so actually, how inflammatory can I be about invoked droids? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the floor is open to you as long as you're not um, specifically calling people out, unless you're ready to you know, back it up. I... All Lord, right, floor is yours. droids are trash, and if you think they're good, uh, you need to learn something. Uh, <laughs> I think they have, like, a good matchup against Black Wings. Um, right. Like, that's the one thing that I don't think, that I'm a little unsure about, like, why did it have such a bad win rate against Black Wings? Um, I think that's one of their better matchups. Um, it's just that uh, invoked roids, they don't really gain a lot of card advantage. Like kite roid, it's a Karibo. Can you not beat a Karibo? Like, um, like the deck is very passive, and then passive decks just like don't do a whole lot. You know, there's better decks that do the same thing for sure yeah. right now as well. Yeah, it's like also... it's, it's kind of close to yeah. stall. And then, like, stall decks generally just punish people for making mistakes. So that's why I think it does well in some st- scenarios. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I, would, I would like to add that uh, also the roids themselves are close to vanilla monsters. Uh, so when you open them, you're just not doing anything to the state of the field. At best, you're just poking for 18 to the face with submarine roid. So yeah. you always need the back row to back it up. Otherwise, it's just going to be difficult. Yep. Yeah, another thing that we saw that we see from this meta analysis compared to last week. I'm going to pull up the last week meta analysis again for for those that want to just compare it. Um This is last week's. So last week we saw Shirnui, uh regular Shirnui going 44% and then the uh Ghost Meets Girl version going 62.5%. So if you look at their spot on the list as well, the normal Shirinui went 50 uh, or played 50 games, whereas the GMG one played 24. Now, if you go back to this week's meta analysis, you'll see that Shirinui was normal Shirinui was played more, and GMG Shirinui was played a little bit more. The key thing, however, is that regular Shirinui had a better win rate. It went from 44% to 47.5%, and GMG Shirinui went from 62% to 57%. Now, given the small sample size of all these games, um, that's probably standard deviation. You know, th- there's the range of how it could have gone. But it seems like both of them have not changed much. And teams still are not playing GMG Shirinui at a number that maybe they could play uh, given the percentage that we see. Saw so Scott said it best you take these numbers with a grain of salt because it's all situational observation. But you guys think that GMG Shirinui is being extremely underplayed right now in Team Wars? 
Mm -hmm. Maybe because it is harder to play. It has a, some sort of learning curve to it. So people just prefer playing the, the other build, which was uh, in the meta longer. That's at least my opinion. I think if you're in this league, you probably, on a 15-man roster, you have people that can play GMG Shiranui. It's not that difficult. Uh, I think teams, it all, it all depends on what you're, you're building for right now, if you can find the space in your lineup, I guess. I don't I know. Think some teams. I'm... Oh, sorry. No, that's all I was gonna say. Go ahead. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, I think some teams like they get that it's good, but I know I shouldn't like say that. Oh, pe oh. some people just like don't own the deck as like a reason to like they aren't playing it. But Ghost Meets Girl is in like the Goki box, you know. So not saying everybody skipped it, but a lot of people skipped it. That's fair. Definitely a really good point, actually, uh, that you made there. Uh, especially for a deck like Shirinui that's been hit so much, it's really hard to say whether or not it's going to be a good investment to get Ghost Meets Girl Shirinui. But, man, if your team needs it, and you know you can play it at a high level, like if you're one of the Shirinui players on your team, I think it could be worth... Uh, it's only a mini box, right? So... Um, you do need three of the card. I've seen some lists playing two, though. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's been going down. Some I've, se I've seen some Japanese players playing two. Um, I, I don't know much about the deck, uh, like as far as the deck building standpoint, to really comment on that. But yeah, the final thing I want to talk about: um, Dark Magician, fifty percent. Is this the epitome of Dark Magician? Coin flip. Yeah, not even. It's worse though. I mean, it's surprising to me oh, okay. how well it's doing and everything. To be honest, that it's even being played as much as it is and everything. I get it because people want to share a counter. Um, but yeah, it's it's really really surprising because the the percentage chance that you should open combo and like a live karma cut is so low. But it's it happens so frequently. It seems like it's crazy. I'm salty though. So whatever. <laughs> You just gotta believe, I guess, in the ABK. Yeah, choose believe and you can do it. I yeah, just the... think the, the percentage comes uh, because the deck has access to Kaiko, which is really good in this meta. Being able to shut down the graveyard is a crucial in this meta. So it does seem very interesting to me that Dark Magician is 87.5% against Shirinui, uh, the regular control version, but the combo version, it's 100%. Obviously, only two duels versus the eight duels. But like you said, Saska, people are bringing this for Shirinui. Uh, and it seemed to be successful this week. Last week, it was actually uh, not as good versus Shirinui. If we... The combo Shira doesn't have as much trouble with it, like the Ghost Meets Girl version. Right. So that's why, like, it was just two duels, small sample size. Well, I think those two duels were, uh, those two duels, I think, were Metal Overload. <laughs> metal, yeah, yeah, they probably were. And, yeah. yeah. Busted. So, uh, yeah, and he he opened, like you said, he opened combo with Karma Cut, so uh, there's not much you can, not much many decks can do against that. But there's the meta analysis for this week. Uh, the final thing that we're going to discuss, um, and just we'll only discuss with the people the games of the people in the call right now. The final thing we're gonna discuss is the schedule for week four. I'll get that up for you guys on the uh stream. There we go. Uh there we have it. Week four uh <clears throat> week four schedule. Now First game that I see here from someone is Bricks and Potatoes versus Phoenix. Daskan, this is your game. Uh, I don't know what your guys' record is with BMP in the past, but I know that you guys are both a team filled with OGs from Season 2. What is it about playing against BMP? Not that they're a top team, but the fact that they're an OG team makes it a different type of matchup so they're definitely also a top team they're a top team right, they're right, an right. old team they got people who've been around for a while which 
what that adds into, I mean, Andy said it best, like it, it gives you the knowledge, you know, that when you're playing a match like this against bricks and potatoes or against Phoenix, you know, that you both are coming into this, you know, how the format works, you know, how to play it at the highest level, you know, how to compete at the highest level. So you're building against another team that's going to do that. On top of that, we, I mean, we play bricks and potatoes all the time. We scrim with them, obviously not this season. Um, because we've been in the same division, so we'll probably start doing that afterwards. But they're a team that we try to scrim with the most. Uh, Gift is awesome, and Andy, obviously, all of those guys. So, like, this is – you love this, man. This is what it's all about for sure. It's going to be a fun week. All right, and, you know, that game is definitely going to be on the main channel. Uh, we don't know when. It's looking like it's going to be Sunday, though. Um, probably like sunday at three i'm sure i'm gonna go confirm that today okay well uh love train uh you're also here you've uh not been able to talk much but your team is playing against destiny draw um one of the best teams in team wars how do you feel about this matchup um we are very excited actually like uh, draw uh, we draw sense wanted to play against destiny draw and we are really preparing for that match we are really excited and yeah yeah what can i say more i can yeah. Uh, yeah we are really excited so i hope we can bring some really good performance this week well your team is number one uh in the division actually if i can go grab that real quick your team is number one in the division d draw is number five if you guys win this game you're going to be number one uh, and probably ahead of pretty much an entire week ahead of every other team. But if you guys lose, you'll still be maybe uh, one to three. Um, as you may know, if you end number one in the division, you get a uh, bye week in the first week of Team Wars. Do you guys have a goal to get that bye week or is it just trying to focus one week at a time? Our goal is to get to uh, to go to playoff for sure, but yeah. Actually, our goal is uh, our goal is. Uh, I mean, this week we need to win. Really, it's gonna kind of guarantee, almost guarantee our playoff. So we're gonna try hard. All right. Well, best of luck to you uh, in your uh, match versus D draw this week. Um, Thank you. Yep. So we also have um, Mini B from Lost Tribe here. You guys are playing against BZ, also one of the best teams in Team Wars. They're two and one right now, but last season they ended eight and two with the top eight playoff finish. How confident are you guys against a team like BZ this week? Well, it's definitely gonna be an exciting match for us. I think this is the first time we will ever face BZ in a competition. Um, it's, a, it's a match between the second and the third in the division, so hopefully we can beat them and close the gap to FM. Yeah, and uh, looking at the division now, you guys are second place in the division. Um, did you expect to be second place after three weeks, or are you guys not really looking at what you expected and just focusing it one at a time? We're we really taken it, you know, week by week. And I think one of our strongest points is we don't care much about numbers. We just care about doing our job in the war, and then the results should come to, to us, basically. But okay. it's really nice surprise that we're second. Oh, yeah, very, very well said. Um, keep on losing that schedule picture. Okay. So best of luck to you versus BZ. I think that also is going to be you. a very highly anticipated match this week. Um, uh, skip. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Herf, Toon Squad versus mm -hmm. Duelings Taiwan um, this week. Another big name that you guys have to play against. Uh, and as a new team, you're going to have to get used to things like this, playing against big names as you are trying to make a big name for your team as well. What makes it so difficult being a new team and what changes maybe are you guys going to do for this week to make sure you can continue that winning streak well i mean we are a new team but we have we do have uh, a lot of people that have played like a decent amount of team wars in the past 
So, uh, I, I mean, I genuinely think while we are a new team and we're still getting used to each other, we all have confidence in each other. and We've played with a lot of people on our team before. So, I mean, honestly, I think most of us are just excited to be able to play against Duel Links Taiwan because, I mean, they're a fun team to go against because they're so explosive. They play a lot of, like, re really heavy and fast and aggressive decks, and it's just a fun war to play. Well, well said, and, uh, you know, trust being one of the biggest things, uh, I definitely agree with that, and best of luck to you guys uh, in your uh, matchup this week. Hopefully uh, that match will uh, be an exciting one to watch. Yeah, I mean, plus, I mean, we have we have Moo Moo on our team, which is Undercover Clapper, number one. <laughs> yeah, Moo Moo definitely... Uh, Hidden Clapper and also uh, one of our favorite streamers at Team Wars. Uh, but uh, going on to the uh, final match we'll talk about, uh, Tier 0 versus Immortals. Uh, Neg, Immortals being one of those up-and-coming teams, uh, they've been in Team Wars for a long time, but each season they just seem to get better and better. Last season they made their first playoffs ever as 6-4. and four, And uh, if I do look at the division now, you guys are neck and neck with them in the division standings immortals being two and one and you guys being two and one this is a very important match this week uh and knowing that they've been one of those sleeper teams with sleeper players how confident are you guys especially after that blowout performance earlier this week um i mean we're confident that's all i can really say we uh we practice a lot we test a lot you know what works and what doesn't or at least i'd like to think so so yeah well we're um, good to go. you guys are uh two and one with the plus two so uh how important do you think it is to win this week um, given your placing in the standings i think it would benefit greatly just because um it, well every win helps but like ultimately, your goal should be just like to win. So, um, preferably getting first in the the division will help you. But like, if not, you still like you know having an edge over your competitors is good. Yeah, and uh, you know, well said. Um, I think you know you guys are going to be looking forward to that victory this week and uh wish you uh, and immortals a uh good luck in a close war yeah for sure um i'm trying to see if there's any other games that just pop up to the eye here that are definitely going to be main mainstream but i think we covered mostly all of them here uh i guess that's it i've chat has any uh oh, i forgot to change the current topic if chat has any uh you know, questions to any of the uh, players in the call right now, uh, please do uh, ask. We have um, negative one from tier zero, Sauce God, the owner, and I believe also the manager of uh, Phoenix, Herf, a uh, player from Two <laughs> Squad, and Mini B, manager of Lost Tribe, and then also Love Train, um, the uh, manager of Draw Sense, one of the only 3 0 teams, uh, along with. Phoenix and FO, uh, FM. That's a uh, great question. <clears throat> I stink at this game, first of all. So I don't know how to answer that for you. Bulat saying, Who's my sleeper pick for fantasy this week? Uh, I don't know. I oh, yeah. It's Lord. It's Lord this week. <laughs> okay, here, let me. <clears throat> You know, I don't know if I want to say it because then you know, I'll say it. I don't think I can do I don't think I can win fantasy anymore. Um let me see. Uh uh someone asked in the chat, player of the week to be updated. Yes, so they are behind in player of the week, but it will be updated too often. Very soon. Uh yeah. It will it will be updated soon. Um we promise. Maybe All right, the real inside fantasy information is T Nobs. Easy T -Nobs. pick. 
Easy pick, at least going 2-2 automatically. Easy, safe pick with a lot of upside. Okay, uh, Love Train, uh, I have a question for you. Xerix is asking in the chat, uh, why do you think uh, 12 o'clock cheaters have not been able to you know, do as well as they want to this season? Uh, that's what I'm wondering too. Actually, they have really good players like Lady Zoom. You know, every Korean knows his Christian is perfect, but he didn't have great performance this week. Like, he lost two games in a row. I mean, in the less than one minute. I don't know. I don't know why. Seriously. I mean, they are a really good team. Actually, we had scrims too, and they played really well. But maybe they had bad luck. Actually, they're really great players. Believe me, really, they have really good players, but maybe it's not the time now. So maybe if they have better luck next time, then they're going to have great performance, I guess. So do you think um, maybe it's nervousness? I know you said that your team has been very nervous uh, as well. I mean, a lot of Korean players are watching that are, are not on draw sense or uh, 12 o'clock cheaters. They're all rooting for you guys to win. But do you think that makes you a little bit more nervous? uh maybe but yeah i mean we can overcome kind of this nervousness i mean and yeah okay well you know hopefully 12 o'clock cheaters can win this week they have a very hard game versus neo this week but i believe in them to uh you know finally get that win and uh, also you guys a very very exciting game destiny draw versus draw sense i'm gonna be looking forward to watching that but um all right i don't know if we have any other questions from chat i still need to answer that question from Ulad though um yeah i, I i'm gonna decline the comment at this time Ulad. uh i feel like whatever i say is just gonna be viewed as disrespect and i've already uh perhaps crossed the line with my comment earlier about Teams blaming luck. So again, I apologize for that. If anyone got offended from that, I wasn't trying to um, pinpoint or blame any specific teams. I just noticed in the past, um, a lot of top teams, just historically, that we n know are doing well right now, especially, have blamed entire law uh, uh, wars on losses uh, without really looking at preparation that they put into the war uh, st strategy wise and stuff like that and later on they would admit uh, you know not having that bias of loss that they uh, weren't able to execute properly uh, their strategy but you know i wasn't trying to throw shots at anyone i i you know i love all the teams and so i wish the best for all the teams my my goal here is to make sure we have a very competitive league and I want to give you guys good content uh, covering the competitive league. But thank you, Neg1, Sauce God, Herf, Mini B, and Love Train for being on Team Wars Talks number three on the late notice. Um, but uh, thank you so much for all you guys. If you guys want to shout out anything, we'll go in order of those that are in the VC. I guess Mini B, if you want to. Oh, Mini B is actually, uh, he had to go. Uh, but thank you, Mini B, for that, uh, for, for joining in and saying your piece. Uh, Herf, do you have any shout outs or any comments, last comments? I just want to shout out my boy, Mumu. He, okay, you guys were talking about sleeper fantasy picks. Honestly, Mu should be in the roster on your fantasy team every single week. Best player I know. See him, uh, I expect to see big things from him. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. I'll play that video at the end uh, as we're closing the stream. Uh, we're closing off the stream. Uh, James, any uh, shout outs? Any, anything you want to add before we go? Yeah, just real quick, I want to shout out Mumu. Uh, <laughs> great chat. Lovely person. Love seeing him in chat. Uh, follow his stream. Go subscribe to him. Other than that, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Later, guys. Yeah, James, uh, Love Train, anything final that you want to say? Um, um, I really thank you for invitation. By the way, it's oh no really, problem. Thank yeah, you for being here. Delightful experience for me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, Neg one, anything you want to say? Uh, just thanks for having me on. 
Uh, big shout out to Mumu in chat. <laughs> I think you should put him on your fantasy. Um, but yeah, always a pleasure. Did all right. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you to the chat and thank you for those that were uh, on Team Wars Talk with me today. I'll go ahead and uh, show that, uh, that final video in a sec. But thank you all and uh, see you guys next week. Uh, we did the poll and you guys wanted Tuesday, so we'll be back on Tuesday next week at 1 p.m. EST. Make sure to tell everyone because I don't think many people realize we even do this to begin with. So make sure to tell your team and uh, maybe I can get more people from your team. If you're watching right now and you want to be on Team Wars Talk, you want to talk about your team, then send me a message and let me know. But uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, everyone, and see you guys next week. All right. It's AM on time. It's Glade XC Summon!